People everywhere have discovered that there's a bit more to the symbols around them. An unseen force steering the world, leaving its mark every place it touches. But if bound to material and reason alone, the logical mind immediately sees symbolism's big flaw. Take these for instance. The countless pictures of politicians and various other celebrities throwing up what appear to be satanic gang signs. Now if you think these pictures are all coincidence, I want you to turn off this video and go watch TV. Of course this begs the question, surely the elite have better ways of identifying themselves to each other? Strategically speaking, hidden in plain sight doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why not lies in plain sight and leave the truth completely undocumented? Foolish of course, but you can't own the world and be a bunch of fools, and you need more than cruelty to hijack the world. You need guidance. Their symbolism usually falls under one of two categories, predictive programming and hidden in plain sight. Predictive programming is a technique where people are exposed to a message that causes them to respond in a pre-programmed way to similar future events. Typically, there's a crisis, and that crisis by the end of the movie is resolved using certain means. When that event occurs in real life, the individual, although knowing this is real life as opposed to a movie, is inclined to respond similar to those who had been seen succeeding in the movie. You hear it all the time when somebody says, you know, it's just like this movie or that movie, so it definitely has its effect. Then there's hidden in plain sight. The more mysterious of the two motives. Hidden in plain sight is more like taunting than a clever chess move. It involves putting symbols and messages out there encrypted in such a way so that, if you're not looking for them, the meaning will fall below the threshold of your notice. The number of clues the Illuminati offer outsiders who know the hidden meaning of their symbols is needless, conspicuously needless. So who stands to gain? Happy Feet is basically a retarded kids movie where a bunch of penguins seize upon every excuse possible to start dancing. First they dance, then they alienate the star of the movie, then they dance, then they find out their fish is disappearing, more dancing, then they find out the evil humans are destroying their environment, throw in some dancing, then they rebuild the Tower of Babel while dancing, and then the evil humans find out about the starving penguins and what they're doing to the environment. So what's the problem? Well, among other things, we are messing with their food chain. And we have got to do something about it. We suggest a ban on all marine harvesting. Why should we do anything at all? But they're just a bunch of flightless bugs at the bottom of the world. Is equal to I don't want to live alone without no penguins. So what are we going to we do about it? We want to be the sheriff. Bang up the sign, no fishing. UN gets involved. Meanwhile, in Penguin Land, more dancing, and alas, fish aplenty. So when the little slave larva is faced with a crisis, such as an environmental one, the first thing they'll think of is, this is a job for world government. I've seen it work before, somewhere. In Independence Day, you have an unsuspecting population, a hostile alien invasion, and a military that can't seem to fight back. The entire human population is in disarray. It's finally decided that humanity's response must be unified and coordinated. They form a world government of sorts in that they form a global command structure, find out the alien's Achilles heel, and humanity is saved. Now, to its credit, Independence Day contains no dancing. There are, however, at least two layers of predictive programming. First, world government solves the problem. Fish aplenty. Secondly, it's eventually the plan of the elite to convince us into a bogus alien invasion, or perhaps a real one the Illuminati would rather avert. So this prepares us for that us-against-them mentality. In H.G. Wells' Things to Come, humanity has been decimated by war. Industry was thought to have ground to a halt, diseases everywhere, most if not all major cities lay in ruin. But a world government is forming in the background, hell-bent on destroying all sovereign states. Using advanced weapons like aircraft and poison gas, the world government pounds at rogue nations. Eventually, those ten pesky tin pot dictators are destroyed, and the new master race, together with the world government, march triumphantly into humanity's great new age. In the movie, it's progress this, progress that, painting national sovereignty as problematic and against progress. This is certainly an example of predictive programming. This movie, released in 1936, preceded World War II by only three years, and the formation of the United Nations by only ten. This movie was definitely meant to seed the mind with things to come. In Fight Club, a seemingly normal guy is living a double life. In one, a yuppie. In the other, a terrorist. His alter ego, Tyler Durden, is leading him into a world of extremism. 
carrying out acts of violence and terrorism, not for financial gain, but for ideological reasons. Eventually, the nameless main character would be tricked into rigging large financial buildings with explosives. Now, this is hidden in plain sight because the World Trade Center was brought down in a similar fashion, but it's predictive programming because it lends itself to the idea that such an act against a financial center was the work of extremists rather than the authorities. 300 is an excellent example of predictive programming, and hidden in plain sight if you have the right eyes. First, you have the King of Sparta and an alternate history of Greece where shirts are illegal and all of Asia is sending its hordes of soldiers. You have the ruler of Persia, a black guy for some reason, and you even have the E4s, greedy, inbred black magicians who secretly rule over even the kings of Greece. Sound like anyone we know? So the Spartan king goes out to pick a fight with the Persians, with Persians who appear determined to be helplessly impaled on one side, and the brave Spartan king with his elite fighting force on the other. Like heat-seeking missiles, wave after wave of Persians clamor desperately to be in the path of the sharpest sword possible. But alas, the Spartan king is defeated. Now it's no secret that the New World Order wants to move into Asia, but naturally it will face hordes of enemy soldiers. So it helps to have it implanted in the minds of people that a superior few can stand against the many. Yeah, the Arabs will just walk right into your spears, and if the Chinese give you any trouble, just push them off a cliff. They foster this idea because this is exactly what they're cooking up. John Carpenter's They Live starts off with Roddy Piper emerging from train tracks or a train station. If you've seen my first documentary, Hollywood Insider's Fallen Angels, you'll know that trains are symbolic for interdimensional travel. Roddy first just tries to get by in his new life, but eventually his curiosity would get the better of him. Soon he would realize that the world he lived in was false and that there's non-human beings masquerading as ordinary people. He then tries to bring in his new, rather reluctant friend into this knowledge. They both set out to undo this conspiracy, eventually succeeding in a sacrificial way. This is an instance of hidden in plain sight, an uncomfortable truth mixed in with trivia and displayed to the masses. But this story of the quote-unquote vampire hunter is common, so if John Carpenter was making a savior out of Roddy, then it also is predictive programming. In The Matrix, a messiah-like character called Neo learns his world is an illusion and there's a war happening behind the scenes. After much trial and discovery, he eventually finds out he's the chosen one and defeats the machines. From a hidden and plain sight perspective, it reveals that the world the masses live in is imaginary. From a predictive programming point of view, it propagates the savior angle, the chosen one who will save humanity and undo the conspiracy. Demolition Man features Sylvester Stallone, who is unfrozen after decades in ice, he comes to find a world full of squares ruled by a man who sabotages his own city in order to seize more control of it. Stallone, by the end, kills the guy and ends his tyranny. Demolition Man has it all. Retina scans, chips that control both buying and selling and can locate you anywhere, a strict police state where even reproduction is regulated, a leader that doubles as a religious leader who not only oversees secular but moral affairs as well, and even the inclusion of false flag terror as the leader releases criminals to terrorize the city. From a hidden and plain sight perspective, it's a no-brainer, no symbology, only the literal future. From a predictive programming perspective, it reinforces this savior concept who will come and undo the conspiracy. The Man Who Would Be King is the Illuminati's favorite story hands down. It tells the story of two Englishmen who go off to a distant primitive country intending on returning with loads of gold. When they arrive, they are mistaken for divine beings, rule, and eventually revealed to be only human and are punished. Since its only message is that the next one to arrive claiming to be God is a fraud, it doesn't do much in terms of predictive programming. But with Masonic and Illuminist symbolism unconcealed, it has hidden in plain sight written all over.